because we are busting indie myths on the daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly until the Scott Nats see clearly that we're down with the capital A to the double F G. And in this busting indie myths part 19, we are going to address the oft heard myth that people in the United Kingdom, we unionists, we pro UK people are scared of having another referendum. The implication being, of course, that we're afraid that we might lose it. And I'm going to explain it's not about that, it's not about fear. It's about our duty of care to something that we love, which means we do not endanger it needlessly. And it's about the fact that we have absolutely nothing to gain from another referendum, which I'm about to explain to you very clearly. So, they'll say things like, if you believe in the UK so much, why be afraid to ask the people of Scotland the same question again? It's intended to goad us into yielding. Well, there are several reasons why we're not going to fall for that, uh, regardless of the overwhelming fact that we've already had a referendum and we already won decisively. But apart from that, there are plenty of reasons why we're not wanting to have a second one. And the first thing that needs to be said, right, is a fundamental matter of principle. And it's seldom said, but it needs to be said and it needs to be heard. And it's this, Scotland has a right to stay in the United Kingdom. You know, all we ever hear is from the, the, the complaining Nats is, Scotland's got a right to leave. Okay. By the same token, Scotland has a right to stay in the United Kingdom. Okay, how about that for a change? How about hearing that for a change? Scotland has a right to stay in the United Kingdom. We have a right to stay in the United Kingdom. That's the fundamental philosophical point here at stake. We have a right to stay and in that sense, we depend entirely upon a parliament and the government which comes from that parliament in London, the British parliament, the UK parliament, the Union parliament. We depend upon them to keep us together, to stand for our right to stay in the UK, to safeguard the integrity of the UK, to safeguard us, to keep us all together. We depend upon the British parliament to do that. It has the absolute right and responsibility and duty to keep the United Kingdom together on behalf of all the people throughout our islands who believe in the United Kingdom from Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales and England. So that's the first thing that needs to be said. We have a right to stay in the UK and we have a right to do whatever is required democratically to ensure that. Now, to address the matter of whether or not we are scared of having a second referendum, our response follows from that fundamental principle that we have a right to stay in the UK. Firstly, we love the United Kingdom and you don't casually risk the life of something that you love on some kind of throw of the dice, which who knows how it could go. You don't do that with something that you love. You have a duty of care to it. You have a duty of care to protect it and to not endanger it needlessly. And for the United Kingdom to function, its very existence should not be constantly put up for question. Okay, you have to have somebody, and it's the British Parliament, who says... We're standing by the United Kingdom. We're not going to risk it. We're not going to endanger its life needlessly. So we have a duty of care. We love the United Kingdom. And from that follows our duty of care not to endanger it needlessly. Now, on top of that, 
And here's the thing. We have absolutely nothing to gain from a second referendum. Think about it. Even if the pro-UK people were to concede a second referendum, do you think do you think that we'd be somehow thanked for that? Do you think if the if the Scottish nationalists were granted another referendum that they'd be oh so thankful? Oh look at these unionists, they've granted another referendum. What a great bunch of lads. Of course not. They would do what they always do, which is they would take what they were given, they would bank it, and they would then pretend that they never received it, okay? Because that's their modus operandi. That's what they always do. And they have to take things without thanks because they have to maintain their grievance strategy, okay? Their grievance strategy of always being upset is what keeps their supporters motivated, okay? So they're never going to thank you, even if you gave them a referendum. Secondly, they'd still accuse us of being fearful. They'd say, oh, now that they've granted a second referendum, they're on the run. They're running scared. Look at them. Scaredy cat unionists. They're afraid. Thirdly, it's not going to stop them complaining. Okay, all their grievance would quickly switch to complaining about the terms of the referendum. You know, if we were to say, well, only British citizens should be able to vote, they'd go, oh, you're, you're, you're trying to gerrymander the, the electorate. If we were to say you have to get 60% of the entire electorate before you're considered to have reached the required threshold to ensure that most people are actually for this. You know, if we set a threshold like that, they're going to say, oh, no, 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 you're gerrymandering. So it's not going to stop them complaining. And ultimately, here's the thing, even if we won, even if we won a second referendum, it would settle nothing. It would settle nothing, okay? It would not put it to bed, because do you think these Scottish nationalists are going to go to bed? Do you think they're going to go, oh, well, that's two referendums now. Ah, well, we had our shot. Let's just, uh, let's just find a new hobby. No, no. If it was, the sa if it was approximately the same result or if it was a closer margin than in 2014, then they're just going to say, we're even closer to our goal than ever before. Game on for a third one. And if we won by a greater margin, well, it might put it, it might quiet things down for a little while, but so long as the SNP and Greens were still in control at Holyrood, they'd keep the pot boiling. They'd keep the pot boiling. So even if, we had it, and even if we won, it would settle nothing. And it might even make things worse by encouraging them to go for a third. So why go to all that bother, even if we were to win, just for them to start campaigning for yet another? So there's nothing to gain here. So to summarise, we're not scared to have another referendum. Rather, we believe we have a right to stay in the UK and to do what is required to stay. And our union parliament has the right responsibility and duty to stand up for the integrity of the UK on behalf of all the people of our islands who believe in the United Kingdom. And we love the United Kingdom and we have a duty of care to it, not to endanger it needlessly. And we have absolutely nothing to gain from a second referendum because even if there was one, then they won't thank us. They'll keep complaining and they'll continue to accuse us of being fearful and even if we won, it would settle nothing because they'd start campaigning for another one. So we're not scared of a second referendum. We're just sensible.